Alrighty, I think you can see the, the chalkboard here in our talk for the magic of pressure in a Stirling engine. And it really is a magic element of the Stirling engine cycle. Let's first start with pressure and what that is. Pressure, basically, we're talking about pressure of a gas, right, in the engine. And if I think about it, it's just how much stuff I have in a particular container. Here I have a container and I have so much stuff. We measure that stuff by maybe pressure, 10 pounds per square inch type of thing. And over here, I have the same size container. I just have more stuff in it. I get a higher uh, reading on my pressure. I have more pressure, more energy in that same space. And that's how we're going to look at pressure uh, today for this. Okay, if I look at basically what the uh, law of gas, how a gas behaves under heat, what I see is if I have some type of a, a working fluid in a cylinder and I have a piston here that floats back, let's say, and I heat that particular gas, that gas is going to expand. So it's going to start at a certain volume. And I heat it, it's going to want, it's going to have more energy to push things apart, right? So it's going to push this piston back. So with the heat, the gas expands, right? And that relationship is defined by our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, and T is temperature. All right. Now, if I look at what happens in a Stirling engine or any, any engine, I have amount of heat that I'm applying to this volume of air. It pushes the piston back X amount. Now, if instead I have twice that amount of air in the same volume, it's going to push that piston back further. It's going to push it back some amount Y, and Y is going to be greater than X. So if I have more air that I'm applying the same amount of heat to, I'm going to get more expansion. I'm going to get more pressure. So if I have more air, I'm going to get more with the same amount of heat, I'm going to get more expansion. If I have more air in the same space, I'm going to get more pressure. So more pressure is going to give me more expansion. And what that means is I'm going to get more power. So if we look at just a typical internal combustion engine, they do that. They do the same thing, but they use a turbocharger, right? So here we have the turbocharger. It's really just a fan, and it's just blowing more and more air into that cylinder. So the turbochargers for each cycle of that engine, it's pushing that air into the cylinder, it's making more air, getting more air for that heat, for that expansion to get more power output. In a Stirling engine, the beautiful thing is there's no input, there's no exhaust, it's a sealed system. But yet that same law applies, that same rule applies, that if I have more stuff in here, more air, and I heat it with the same amount of heat, I'm going to get more expansion, I'm going to get more power. So I'm going to get um, more pressure, I'm going to get more power. And the beauty of this is, instead of an internal combustion engine, we have to jam that in each cycle, every time that piston moves. Here, I just do it once. I, I pressurize the whole system, and my power output goes up. Now, and that's why we see Stirling engines in all different sizes. Why some small Stirling engines, here's a small Stirling engine, here's a big Stirling engine, the small Stirling engine may have the same or more power than the large Stirling engine. Well, it's all a factor of temperature and pressure in that engine that's, that's doing the work. So I could have a small engine that has high pressure, but has the same power as a larger engine with low pressure. You might say, well, why aren't all, all, all uh, engines small with high pressure? Well, there's some challenges that come with that. <clears throat> the challenges with high pressure are basically your seals have to be somewhat uh, specialized. You have a higher uh, danger level. If I have, you know, a thousand PSI of pressure in a cylinder, yeah, that's, you know, explode, could be a bomb, whatever could happen. And, and also I have a higher cost. On a larger size... I have a uh, challenge in managing my uh, volume to heating area, volume of the gas to the heating area that's heating it, cooling it, right? Because the volume expands as a cube and the area expands as a square. And then I have a cost because I have a bigger, more material. So there are pluses and minuses for both. 
And if I talk about putting pressure into a Stirling engine, there are really two ways to do it. One option one is pressure is fixed to the factory. That thing has the pressure put into it as it comes off the line, and it's never, uh, never lost, and it can never leak, which is a tough thing to do. You know what what pressurized systems, what closed pressurized systems do we know of today? Uh, let's say in the auto industry that are like that well the air conditioning system in most cars is a closed system and those are not supposed to leak but as you know uh at times over the years they do leak so it is tricky to maintain that fixed pressure over the life of that engine years and years and years uh, over that duty cycle option two is to go ahead and have a pump and pump that pressure in there so you're starting off with no pressure and then as the engine operates you're taking a little bit of energy and you're using and you're using this pump to press it in there and you're not having to pump it up for each cycle like a turbocharger but what you're having to do is you're having this pump it's a very small pump and it takes just a little bit of energy you're having that pump just put a little bit of air in there to cover up for any leaks that may be happening through the seals through any of the joints of the engine things of that nature um, <clears throat> so here you have to worry about you know, am I ever going to have a leak? Is any of that pressure going to seep out of the engine? Versus here, you're going to lose a little bit of energy for each cycle that you have to pump. But the plus side here is it replaces any leaked pressure in the in the engine itself. Now, you might say, well, why are we uh, why are we talking about pressure? Why why are we have to talk about pressure? The Melvin is an ambient pressurized engine. Well. Here's the exciting news is that Septa Motors, Melvin, is getting some pressure, right? We've been working on a pump, and uh, we're, we're done with the design, and we're going through testing of it now. It's pretty exciting, and we're, we're expecting that pump to uh, double or triple the uh, uh, output power of the Melvin engine. And we should have an update on that soon, but that is why we want to do a chalk talk, just to get a baseline of uh, understanding pressure. And that's really about it. So I'll just uh, say thank you for your support, and we'll see you on the on the next next round.